All right, welcome everybody. It is the bottom of the hour, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm Jeanette Grand. I am the Director of Marketing here at Jernix, and Meredith Zachris is our Director of Product. She's going to be leading you through our customer training for our 24H2 release, which is Jernix JX version 13.3.0. So um, if you've got questions as we go, uh, put them in the questions pane and we'll save them for the end. We'll answer as many questions as we've got time for at the end. Um, but don't wait because we may miss it and we don't want to miss your questions. So, and hello from Missouri. Hello, Missouri. Um, we've got Dallas and St. Louis in the house as well. So with that, um, we are going to be recording this and sending out a link to it afterwards. So if there's something that you miss or um, don't worry about taking notes. If you don't uh, need or want to, you can rewatch it afterwards. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Meredith. Take it away. Thank you, Jeanette, and welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming today. I'm going to jump straight on in and go over the broad feature areas that we're going to look at today. Um, I do want to caution you that I am not going to walk through how to do each and every piece of all of this today, just because um, they're fairly complex um, areas of functionality where you couldn't possibly you know, know how to go and do all the things after 30 minutes. Um, but I do want to give you uh, a snapshot of the various areas and what they're intended to do um, so that you can then know if you would like to explore them further uh, with your account managers um, or support team and services team. Uh, one thing that you'll notice here um, for the first three, the wage law monitoring and com compliance, um, Jernix Scout, which is our, our AI assistant, and then our new cloud to cloud integration um, is that they all require a special license key. So even after you, um, you're upgraded to 13.3, you will not necessarily see these new feature areas without a special license key. And you can contact your account manager if any of these um, things are of interest to you. Um, and then finally, we've got the uh, REST API documentation, which will be going live sometime next week. And I'll show you, I'll give you a little preview of that. Um, and of course, that's open to everybody running Dernix JX. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first item here, our wage law monitoring and compliance. And this is really focused on kind of building out some of the areas that um, our customers need for managing hourly employees. Um, some of you may have you know, heard this is California wage law or it changes in the EU or other local regulations that require certain um, rest breaks, meal breaks, reporting time, and other types of handling that, uh, that are specific to wage laws that are cropping up for managing hourly employees. And so we've added some um, handling essentially with a lot of configuration so that it's kind of up to you as to how, um, uh, wh whether it blocks things from happening, requires things to happen, or simply, simply warns uh, when things need to happen. Um, and uh, and that's entirely up to your configuration and what you would like to do. So today we're going to look at just a, a, a sample use case, and I'll briefly walk you through um, what the setup kind of looks like, what the areas are that you might be already be familiar with in JX and how they get set up. But then we'll look at what happens for, say, an exempt employee that needs to track rest breaks. So let's jump on over to our Jernix system. So um, for those of you who use any kind of data validation or rules today, you'll probably be familiar with that, that area that uh, um, has a variety of rule types so you can manage validation rules. And these can be, you know, minimum 40 hours in a week, things like that, where they can, Jernix can check that for you automatically. And so um, employees don't submit timesheets that break those, you know, hard and fast rules, and you don't have to check those when you approve. So there are some new rule types um, around breaks in particular, because the handling is a little bit different than anything that we've offered before in validation rules. And so you'll see uh, break types now similar to other things that you've done in data validation, it's tied to the pay groups. And so you can create as many pay groups as you want. 
Um, you can apply these to some pay groups and not others, et cetera. So you know, it's very, you can get down to the individual users and employees based on the pay groups. And there is a new uh, break type called rest break, or sorry, breaks, break types, and you can do meal breaks and rest breaks here. And then they key off, you know, the pay types that you create. Again, this is something that you create in your system. You can have as many as you want, but you can see that we've created something called rest break here. And you could have a rest break paid, a rest break unpaid, meal break, et cetera, um, all up to you and your configuration. And then you can define what those breaks require. Um, you know, how long do they have to be? And then you go to your break rules and you determine how they're applied. Um, and so in this case, we can say that every four hours, that 15 minute rest break that we had is required. Um, and we can customize the messages that we show to our end users that explain exactly what is required there. Now there is, as I mentioned, the option to, we, we're saying, you know, these are required unless you confirm with your supervisor. So in this instance, there might be a scenario where a rest break can be waived or a break penalty might be paid because the supervisor says, yeah, we really need you to go ahead and work, you know, throughout the day and we'll pay that break penalty. Um, so what we've got is a warn only type of rule versus um, an error that would block submission of the timesheet. So you've got all that flexibility and we have these really fantastic guides um, with import tools that essentially allow you to kind of review uh, these types of rule sets and, and how you might like to apply them. But this is just a, a nice simple sample that we can take a look at to um, see how this is applied. Now, some of the other things that come along with this uh, include the uh, pay code summary, and that is for overtime validation, which I mentioned. And again, if any of you have used the payroll rules engine, you've seen something like this before, but this is independent of the payroll rules engine. Um, and it essentially allows you to say for our hourly folks, um, add a payroll ribbon or a payroll summary um, that, that shows them what their overtime and double time entries should look like. And so this helps the end user, the employee, if you want the employees actually entering their own overtime and double time and validating, this allows them to um, match their timesheet up with um, that, that pay code summary. And then likewise, approvers will see that pay, that pay code summary and be able to ensure that the end users have entered their time correctly. So that's another option that can be added um, to the, the hourly employee's time entry screen to help with this wage law compliance. And then finally, uh, there is an option to customize the um, submit message. So when a user goes to submit his or her timesheet, um, let's say you allow them or they submit with warnings, which is something you can see when you have data validation rules set up to do that, um, you can have them sign off on a particular message and capture that as part of the sheet history. So in other words, if you have somebody um, submitting a timesheet that where they, you know, waived, a break was waived, or um, the company agreed to pay a break penalty because they needed that work done, you know, right that moment, um, you can make sure that the employee signs off on a message that indicates, um, for example, here, what I've done is said that I've attached documentation to explain why you know, certain required breaks were not taken. And so you can uh, put that in the submit confirmation when the employees um, decide to uh, submit their sheets and it allows them to also review and say, yes, I uh, agree to this by submitting this sheet. And so this can be customized um, for each and every entry screen. So again, you can assign this to different groups of employees. Um, now, this particular setting is not tied to a specific license key because um, really there are lots of different reasons why you might like to go ahead and customize that, that submit confirmation. And so we've made that available to everybody because it's not exclusively tied to this wage compliance. And just so you know, um, when you upgrade to 13.3, you will see 
that option in the, the each individual entry screen. But then there's also um, a system setting where you can reset this for everybody in Jernix um, at the highest level. And then you can override these, you know, sheet by sheet. But uh, right now, you know, what you see when you go to submit your timesheet, everybody sees this today, um, are these default messages that Jernix crafted <laughs> a long time ago. Um, but you can now go customize those to fit with your particular processes. So that is a, a feature that anybody can take advantage of if you'd like to provide a little more information to your end users when they uh, go to submit their timesheets. And we'll take a look at what that looks like when we go to submit. All right, so that's just a really quick overview of the areas where uh, these types of things are configured. Let's look at what it looks like in practice. So we're gonna log into one of these non-exempt employees. So he has the break rule um, applied to him via his pay group. And then he is also assigned to a timesheet um, where he has the custom submission. So all of that will apply to Dylan. So when we go and save our time here, we're gonna see that he's logged nine hours, and so, but he's only taken a one rest break. So he's over his uh, 15 minute rest break for every four hours. And so we can see it tells him exactly what he needs to do and what day this is a problem. We also see our uh, payroll pay code summary that I mentioned. And we can see that because he's logged nine hours and the um, overtime rules that apply to him, he should be tracking um, an hour and 15 minutes of overtime rather than all of his nine hours to regular time. So all this information helps our employees to enter their data accurately. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, I, it says I need another break, but I'm going to make a mistake <laughs> and I'm going to enter a break that's too short. And this, and you can also set caps so they could be too long, for example, um, but you can set rules here. And so you'll see that, um, you know, I get a notice up here, I get an invalid rest break note here. So it's letting me know that, hey, you still haven't done this properly. And so then I can put in the correct rest break and all my yellow message is clear. So I'm good to go. And that's just a quick overview of entering this information. Let's jump back to a sheet that has a little bit more data. We can look at the submit confirmation. So here we have a sheet um, where, uh, and you know, I've got this set up to submit with warnings, so it's not gonna give me any trouble about the fact that I haven't logged my overtime. Um, what's more, um, you know, if I save this again, it's going to tell me that on Friday, um, I haven't taken my breaks. And so what I've done here is added some information. Uh, I added a note that said the breaks waived and I've attached, you know, whatever documentation you might have to, make sure that that's official. Um, and obviously this can be customized to suit whatever process uh, various folks need. And you, you could just block this entirely and say, you know, you, you can't submit this, but I've got this set up to where I can submit with warnings. Um, and so if I do that now, we're gonna see that submission customization that I showed you guys. So this right here used to be a, a set message that we that we designed and it couldn't be changed. And now you can change this message um, to say exactly what you needed to say. Oh, <laughs> but I have a punch time, that's a problem. Let's see, where did I do that? On the 23rd. Oh, it's gonna be every day. Here, let's just go back a sheet. <laughs> So I've got that all messed up. Yeah. So then we also have our allocation times. So I've got one here that was submitted where I did have all my time set up properly. And I just wanted to show you that for that submission message, I also have audit trail information that says, hey, this is what my user signed off on when when he submitted with warnings. And so I can go back and say, this is what 
the employee agreed to on this timesheet when he submitted it. So all of that just helps with auditing and making sure that you're, um, you know, handling your breaks properly um, for all of the wage compliance laws. So uh, it's also worth mentioning that the break handling, the warnings, the errors, um, the custom submit messages are all handled in mobile as well. All right, so that was a quick overview of the end user. Let's take a look at our approver because of course the approvers need to know that uh, the sheet was submitted with issues as well. And so we'll look at this sheet submitted from Dylan and we can see that we've got rest break problems on Friday again. But I can also see that Dylan attached a waiver document for those breaks, and I can view that here before I approve the sheet. Likewise, if there were a payroll ribbon uh, available, pay code summary um, uh, applicable to the sheet, I would see this on this sheet view as an approver as well. All right. So that is your quick overview of wage law compliance. There are a lot of different use cases. There are a lot of different configurations and we have um, basically Excel workbooks with saved configurations for different scenarios that can help you get up and running quickly should you choose to um, apply these to some of your employees. So let's move on to Dernick Scout, your AI assistant. And that's weird. What did I do? Go over here instead. Live demos, right? <laughs> uh, no, no, I know what I'm doing. I, I just am not following my instructions. I'm still logged in as my manager who doesn't have access to Scout. That is working correctly. Let's <laughs> log back in as an administrator. So there we go. Just temporarily forgot where I was. Scout AI, now accessible in your analyze menu where you would typically do reporting and exports and working with data in general. Um, so uh, this again is a license key option and you can uh, add it to anybody that you want in your system uh, with the license key to your system roles. So there's a new uh, a rollability, let's go down here. New rollability for Scout. Right there, Access Scout. And we do have it as a part of going live within production versus beta. We do now have it set up to respect um, role level permissions. So if you want to give your supervisors access to Scout, um, but they only see certain employees, that will be enforced in Scout. So Scout is now um, filtered for the data that each individual Jernix user is allowed to see. Um, but in this instance, like I said, I've given this to my admin, uh, my uh, administrators right now, but I could roll this out to managers and even end users who will simply see data for themselves. Um, so Scout is accessible here in the Analyze menu. And uh, after you have gotten the license key and worked with our services team to set up your prompts, which kind of determine what exactly Scout will show you quickly and easily, uh, then you simply click here. We wake up Scout. And it's a little slow again. And so I can start talking to my data. Um, you know, Scout's useful certainly for building reports that you can export to Excel or use the SQL for, you know, if you just want to want to play around with data until you get it in the exact format that you want. Um, but it's also really interesting for exploring your data and learning things that you didn't already know. So show powers by project for 2024 and I can pretty much just ask anything I want. Um, I can add prompts for, you know, if I want to explore um, trends in leave time, I can in the prompt say, hey, these pay types are associated with leave and then I can start talking to it about leave time and, you know, 
when do most people take leave time? When do I have the most people? You know, you can essentially look for trends and, and figure out what else you'd like to explore. So let's say my project and user. And so I just can just kind of, uh, you know, type in questions. I can ask it what data it has. I can have it show lists of things, that sort of stuff. Um, but you can see, let's go down to the one I know. I've got a lot of data. You can expand how much data you show here. There we go, my customer support. And so I can expand and look at the data. I can add details. You know, I can filter by particular project fields, only certain types of projects, and all just by typing questions in here. I can go back. So if I've drilled down into an area and I'm like, nope, that's not quite what I want, I can tell it to go back to the previous report. And then I can export to Excel. Um, I will say that I, my, my version doesn't have the Excel icon, but I can export to Excel right there by clicking on the header. So a lot of functionality here, and like I said, it's it's as much about exploration as it is quickly creating reports. But as you can see, there's the SQL generated by what I asked, and then of course when I get something that I might want to work with, I could also uh, export it to Excel. So Scout's um, pretty amazing, and I expect the roadmap to continue to be exciting in terms of the different things that you can do with it. All right. So running a little short on time, so I'm going to move a little pretty quickly here. Uh, next, I want to go to our cloud to cloud integration framework. Um, for those of you who have ever used an account link or, um, for QuickBooks or ERPs or Project Link or some of the .NET based um, integrations, they're powerful, but they're also you know not all in one system and necessarily easy to uh, you know to maintain and debug and so forth. And so now we have a cloud to cloud integration framework that is directly in your Jernix system right here under tools. Uh, we do refer to it internally as CloudLink and that just allows us to um, differentiate it from the old uh, .NET versions of account link. And you can see that, you know, it's got nice clean settings that you can always look at to see exactly how your integration is set up to run and include. Um, it includes help files. So, and get standard help on you know what the configurations options are and what they mean and then of course um, you know then we plug in specific um, third-party systems and so our initial uh, intro for the cloud to cloud integration is um, an integration with dynamics fno and so then there are settings that will be specific to the third-party system and in this case for FNO, so you can see where you can map fields and do different things with earning codes and project hierarchies depending upon your data and FNO. And then you also have your connection credentials saved here. So all uh, quickly, easily accessible in one place. And it just makes everything a lot uh, more manageable for integrations. So FNO is the initial integration and we have documentation that we can provide for you if you're interested um, just to see the mapping and what's supported in version one um, but we will also be porting some of our current accounting versions for uh, NetSuite, Intact, and Business Central to this cloud to cloud framework so it uh, will improve um, just that like I said the maintainability in particular of your integrations significantly by making it all available in one place and more transparent in terms of the way uh, things are set up and work. And last thing before we get to questions, I want to show just really briefly what we've got coming for our API documentation. Uh, Jernix has had a legacy API. I mean, we have the documentation right here uh, called the JX API for um, you know over 20 years. And I think some of you probably use it to do some small jobs. Um, but we've been building out a REST API for quite some time now. And we just haven't had public documentation for how to use it. And so this is the first version of how to use the REST API. But like I said, we also brought along our legacy API documentation. Here's that you've got both side by side. 
Um, and then we can, the REST API will be the focus of our development going forward so that we ensure that we cover, you know, all the popular use cases for pushing and pulling data um, to and from the Jernix system. Um, but it does have uh, developer guides. Um, it's got, you know, core concepts. We've got tutorials. And if you actually look at, say, you know, a particular item, a particular method, uh, there's options to look at it in different formats. There's a way to test API requests. Very, very cool stuff. Um, so a lot of things that you can do in this documentation. Um, there's search and, you know, uh, like I said, just a, a lot of assistance here that you haven't had before for making use of the Jernix API. And this documentation will be available on the Jernix user community, which is community.jernix.com uh, next week. We'll make an announcement when, when it goes live. Um, but it will no longer be specific to a, a, a release version. Um, so you'll be able to kind of access this anytime. And as we, and we'll update it um, regularly as uh, we add to the API and, or we you know, add more documentation for what's there currently. All right, so that is what we have here for you today. Um, you are able, uh, you can ask your account managers for a demo site anytime if you'd like to take a look at this. And obviously, we can, you know, license key enable any features that you'd like to evaluate. Uh, we will be announcing the REST API documentation go live next week. So at this point, I'm going to open up the floor to questions. All right. Thanks, Meredith. Uh, totally appreciate it. If you have any questions, there's a um, little questions button on the, I, I think it's on your upper right hand side. Feel free to uh, go ahead and put that in and we'll answer as many as we can get to in the next three minutes or so. Um, one question was, how do I get access to the Excel workbooks for the um, for the wage law? That you will go through your account manager and our services team. That's what they'll use to uh, implement uh, the your wage law rules. Okay. So contact your account manager and they'll they'll hook you up with the services team. Okay, great. Um, let's see. I don't see anything else. We have recorded this and we will be sharing this within the next couple of days. Um, you'll get an email with a link. And if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, to email Meredith, Meredith at Jernix.com. It's pretty easy. Um, or your account manager. If you don't know who that is, just do sales at uh, Jernix.com and that will get to our sales team and they can they can get with you and let you know um, and answer any questions you might have. So thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you joining us today. Anything else you want to say, Meredith? I don't think so. Thank you again. I appreciate you as well. Thanks so much and have a great rest of your day. Bye.